In the moment I thought, how can I tell this story? I thought, well, I will just tell the story and see what happens. So in a very simple way, I began to tell the story to people. And by telling it over and over, the story came out in the form that I could remember it and the instance that I could remember it and the things that I found important. But this is the telling of a story of a story. And when you tell a story, you choose those things that are interesting. In other words, you are revealing something about you yourself, the storyteller, what you are interested in. And as I realized that I was choosing things that interested me, so I was bringing my own life into it. And little by little, I said to myself, I have to bring more of my own life into it. And at that point, my relationship with my daughter started to emerge in the sense that as I was working on it here in my home, uh, my daughter's always around. And so her questions about when I went away to the Amazon and what happened there were real things that were happening when I was trying to tell the story. And the story itself, if you like, is a document, but I put another document alongside this document. And so I was sort of documenting what was happening to me as I was reading the book. So you have all these different layers. And I thought, I want to tell this alone in order to try and give the audience a sense of being alone so they attach with the solitude of McIntyre but also confront within themselves certain ideas and prejudices and thoughts and personal feelings. In the 1980s I saw a remarkable theatre artist called Spalding Gray who used to work with the Worcester Group you can see his work on a film called Swimming to Cambodia in which he just sits in front of a microphone and he tells stories about his life. But they were utterly compelling, just him and a microphone. And I'd always admired that and I thought I would be interested to tell a story with a microphone. I've often worked with microphones and I find it very exciting. I wanted to interact or play with all the different kinds of voices that could be evoked by different microphones because there were so many different voices. We have so many different voices in our heads. We are not one person, we are multiple people. And so all of those voices I wanted to evoke. At the same time, it seemed a useful tool to evoke all the different voices that exist within this book. And not just the voices, but the places and the sounds of those places and how you might actually get people there. When you put the headphones on, you get the feeling of being alone. McIntyre was being alone, so you have to reproduce the feeling of being alone, despite being in an audience of several hundred people. And this does seem to work. I wanted a feeling of intimacy because I wanted people to feel a kind of, to examine their own empathy. And empathy and proximity are intimately connected. I wanted uh, uh, people to feel at a certain moment their skin crawl when there are flies all around McIntyre's head and the flies around the binaural head do that. Some people are not worried by it at all but other people find themselves literally scratching. I wanted them people to feel that there were other people with McIntyre and a way to evoke them is through sound even though I myself am alone on stage. Um, and I wanted people to feel the presence of the absent which also happens because you start to see somebody there although they're not there because you hear them there and you place them in space. And so it's a very odd thing asking to an audience to have an individual experience within a collective forum, but that is what happens.